Gold is one of the most expensive metals on Earth. It's been used the world over as currency, and damn, can a little piece be worth quite a lot? But what's even better than having gold in real life is having gold in a video game. So today I'm hunting for shiny golden Pokemon to be the hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Violet. Here are the rules I'll be following for after the first Titan, as I encountered a few problems that'll be explained later. But in this run, I'll only be using golden shiny Pokemon. If a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. No switching between Pokemon, level caps for gyms, and no items in battle. So to start, I named myself Goldilocks, and my goal is to become as gold as possible. So off we went to clear the introductory section of the game, grab our story quest, and unlock our motorbike. <laughs> Now there is a couple of gold shiny Pokemon that I've had my eye on for a while. One of them I previously abandoned in my black shiny only run. We don't talk about that because I spent a while looking for this one. But I won't abandon you this time, I promise Growlithe. Now Growlithe here can spawn between level 11 and 17. And with the level cap being 15, I could potentially find one over the level cap. So let's just hope that doesn't happen. Is that a shiny? It is! Shiny Growlithe! Yes! And it's level 17. God damn it. Stay away! I need a save! Stay away! Ah oh, well, I'll definitely still catch it. So I adopt the cute little pupper and name it Android 18. If you guess the name theme for this video, I'll give you uh what can I give you? Oh, what about one of these sandwiches? Yeah, I, I guess that doesn't look too good. So off I went to look for another shiny Pokemon, hopefully under the level cap this time, to go take on the first gym. The first I had in mind being shiny Miss Magius. But as I was strolling around in the dark night, surrounded by ghost Pokemon, I did not find what I was looking for, but instead found this. Oh my god, that's a shiny Ghastly. That's shiny Ghastly. Far out, no! Great, another Pokemon I can't use. Well, maybe I'll go look for a Bweasel instead. Now, Bweasel isn't a Pokemon I'm overly in love with, but... Hello, motherfucker! Oh my god! GO AWAY! Oh my god! No! Come on, man! You gotta be joking me! I just did my blue shiny run! Why couldn't you have shown up then? Why? Why, you stupid duck? And frustrated by that, as a last resort, I hedged my bets and went over to the westmost part of the South Province Area 4 and began hunting for what could be one of the most popular golden shiny Pokemon in the game. Shiny Lucario. Well, for now it's Rayolu, but you know what I mean. Rayolu can spawn between level 12 and 22, so yet again there's a chance I could find a shiny over the level cap, hence why I didn't want to get it right now, but... Oh! Oi! Chop! Chori! Firapati! 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 Holy shit! Hello, darkness, my well, at least this one's gold. I caught it and named it Gohan, and it was here I decided I would just go and use Growlithe and Rayolu for the time being, removing the level cap rule until after the first Titan. I'm sorry if you think this sucks, but I really didn't want to look for these shinies again, just at a lower level. Of course, the other rules still apply, and to be honest, even if Growlithe was just that one level lower, what was about to happen at the next gym would have still happened. So off I went to take on Katie, and well, it goes exactly as you'd expect. Growlithe, Flame Wheels, Nimble, Tarantula, and Teddy Ursa one-shotting all of them. Thanks for the fight, Katie, but I'ma go find me some crab meat to devour. Rayolu is gonna be perfect for the next fight, since it has Metal Claw, which does really good damage early game and can raise our attack. Is that hair on Clawth some, or what is that? Even though Clawth does a good chunk of damage with Vice Grip, so do we, doing just under a third, but get an attack raise. The following turn he traps me in with block, but the next turn we edge it down just a little bit more where its Angus Shell activates. But Angus Shell also drops its defense, meaning Rayolu can take it out. For battle 2, Clawth ignores us for the majority of the fight, and Arvin Shelter assists our Rayolu in taking it out. But this is a golden opportunity to shout out today's sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Tokyo Tree is a monthly pop Japanese snack box subscription where you'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks. Sakura Co, on the other hand, is a monthly authentic Japanese snack box, which is supporting local Japanese snack makers, and each box comes with 20 traditional and authentic Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and special Japanese tableware. Oh, oh bite into Japan. 
Sakura picnic party. All right, all right, I see, I see. Spring is here and that means it's officially time to celebrate cherry blossom season. Oh, uh, you know what? I actually got to see some cherry blossoms when I was over in Japan recently, so that was pretty cool. This Ghana chocolate cake bite, I actually had in Japan. I feel like I have to try whatever these Kenro Sakura candy thing is, hard candy. Sort of tastes like peach, kind of. That's interesting. I, I actually like it. Kit Kats! Ah, but now for something I know I'll like. Cola Tape Road. Mmm! Good stuff. Oh, greetings from the Sakura Co family. Extra goodies. Every consecutive month you subscribe, you can earn a streak! Okay, now this is more traditional snacks. So you got like your Shiso Sinbei, rice crackers, then you got some donuts, a Japanese donut. I did not see this when I was in Osaka, but apparently this is a soft traditional Japanese dessert crafted by the makers at Satura Confectionery. Ah, oh, specialty. Brings a floral burst of elegance to your palate. Sheesh! Japanese Sakura plate? Oh, that's so adorable! Sakura cake. It almost looks like one of those ginger snacks, but except it's pink and way sugary. It's not sugary! What the heck? I'm excited. Alright, I'm gonna try the tea. I have no idea how to make tea. Slowly pour hot water into the mug. Steep the tea. When the flowers open, the tea is ready to serve. Wait, what? The flowers are- Okay, I've got to try this. It's like actual cherry blossoms. Okay, so... You know what? I'll put both in. Time for the taste test. It's tea, in it? So recently I was in Japan and pretty much every single day I was chowing down on Japanese snacks and I was really starting to miss them. But thankfully, Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co got me covered, bringing all the Japanese snacks to me. This is perfect for me and this is perfect for someone who wants to try the taste of Japan if you can't get over there. So click my link in the description, get a box, trust me you won't regret it, this food is absolutely delicious and uh... I'm gonna go back to eating it. You guys can uh, go and enjoy the video and uh, maybe next video you can eat some of it while you watch. All right, thanks to Sakuriko and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Wait, Goldilocks, aren't you supposed to be trapped in a tower of something? Nah, I got sick of that. Wanted more gold, you know? Well, I'm pretty sure one of these plants are golden. Must get golden snack. Up next was the grass gym, and turns out our adopted papa was going to be perfect for this gym. I started by terrestrializing and then howling for a turn. Put a little retaliates with a little damage, so I raise it again, but unfortunately it does put me to sleep. This allows the plant to chip Growlithe all the way down to just 18 HP. We eventually wake up and knock it and Smolov out before in comes Pseudo Wudo. Fortunately, there was not just one, but two saving graces that saved Growlithe from certain death here. One being Pseudo Wudo always goes for Trailblaze first turn in this fight. Meaning Growlithe could tank the hit, and second off is that Growlithe actually had a speed nature, allowing it to barely outspeed the speed boosted fake rock plant, securing us the win. Oh, thanks Brassius, I'll take that golden badge off your hands. Well if you like gold so much, maybe go check out that mine up past Lavincia. I heard you could find plenty of valuable things up there. Oh, look at all those sparklies, but no gold. At least we found this firestone to evolve Growlithe with though. So since we just cleared our third major battle, it only seemed appropriate to add our third team member to the team. Is riding Maridon across these rocks like that safe? I don't know, but it did help me find this little guy pretty quick. Do! Shiny Swamp Blue! Hey, be your day! Yippee! Woohoo! Shiny Swamp Blue! What a perfect name, Nimbus. But it was time to take on the next Titan, which meant evolving Growlithe and attacking a bird. I didn't realize until the battle started, however, that it was raining, meaning our Terra Flamethrower did slightly less damage than I wanted it to. We lose about 30% of our health from a rock throw, but luckily we still two-shot it going into fight two. I realize that this thing is actually a dark type as well as a flying type, meaning I can actually play rough it and do mad damage. So after just two of them, the empowered bird is no more. Hopefully this plant is golden. Ah, oh, come on man. 
On our way to the first team star base, our Gordon Raiolu evolved into this amazing shiny Lucario. And seeing it in this game, I couldn't help but imagine how cool Mega Pokemon would look in this game. Do you guys think that maybe they could bring back Mega Pokemon in the upcoming DLCs? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and while you're down there, why not leave a like and maybe hit that sub button because what shocks me is only 6% of you are subscribed to the channel. And I know some of you have seen more than one video, so why not help me out? Nonetheless, Lucario is a fighting type and the star base is a dark type base. So you can probably see what's gonna happen here. Oh, hi Giacomo, nice beats. It'd be a shame if someone came in here and uh, crashed the party. What a spin! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, have a good day. Bye. Oh, hey, what's up, Nimona? Oh, yeah, I was just seeing how your quest for those golden Pokemon was going. Oh, yeah, I found a bunch of them actually, Nimona. Want to see them? <laughs> That's a lot of damage! Alright, see you Nimona, I'm gonna go test out this team against Cringe Lord Iono. Leading with my Arcanine, she sends out Watchroll. What's this little bird gonna do against my majestic dog? Flamethrower knocks it out and in comes Belly Bolt. It does tank a flamethrower and with its ability it retaliates with a boosted spark, but Arcanine tanks the hit and knocks it out. In comes Luxio next and it fares no better until the Miss Magius comes in. This Pokemon can be problematic with its Paralyze or Confuse and Hex combo. It outspeeds Arcanide and knocks us down to just 19 HP. The problem is, Flamethrower doesn't one-shot, meaning this is where we're gonna have to say goodbye to Arcanine. Which is what I would have said if I hadn't made sure to give Arcanine extreme speed, allowing it to knock out Miss Magius since it was terrestrialized as an electric type. Thanks for the battle, Iono, but it's about time we take on Mila, the Fire Star Base leader. After defeating 30 of her henchmen, we are finally able to battle her, and her first Pokemon, Torkoal, actually assists me in defeating her. Since Torkoal here has Drought, it sets up a free sunny day, which allows Arcanine to one shot it with a not very effective flamethrower, because it also has the Terra Boost with. Stab plus Charcoal and Sunny Day. And against the Starmobile, it can only do baby damage to me with Blazing Talk, allowing Arcanine to whittle it down. Well, now we're on our way to Gym 4, we should probably pick up Shiny Number 4, and that was going to be the Golden Ball. Oh! Yes! Golden Balls! Golden Balls! What did he say? Hey! Oh! Yes! Let's go! I name it Cell, and we arrive in Cuscarafa only to realize I need to battle the Steel Titan first. So I trekked all the way back, and on my way I spotted the next shiny I was going to hunt for. But that'll have to wait, since this giant worm robot is kind of annoying me. Good job, Lucario. Much better. No! Why isn't it gold? It's white! I realize it's probably not fair for all my Pokemon to be golden if I ain't even sporting the golden look. So off I went to not only find some golden nuggets, but also cover myself in as much golden drip as I possibly can. Woo, nugget, let's go. A little more gold is acquired. Oh, look at me all dripped out in gold. They don't call me Goldilocks for nothing. Kofu is a water specialist. And looking at my team, you're probably thinking, yeah, you don't have a good water counter there. But I don't need a water counter when I got the beast Gohan right here. He leads with the Veluza, which is a psychic type as well as a water type. And I terrestrialized pure fighting, which I initially thought was a mistake, but actually saved me. We outspeed it, hitting it with an Aura Sphere, dealing just under half its health. It retaliates with a Pluck, which would have done significantly less if I hadn't terrestrialized. But fortunately, it stands on blowing, chipping it down just enough where one more Aura Sphere knocks it out. Wugtrio in next brings Lucario deep into the red, but we finish it off with another Aura Sphere as he brings in Crabomitable. And down it goes. Oh yeah, I was meant to pick up that shiny back near the Steel Titan. But after realizing I could get a higher level one down near the port, I went and found... Hello there. Wait. Oh my god, already, already. What? Shot in the room! Whoa, whoa. We name it Bulma and head over to the poison base. And wouldn't you know, Lucario was perfect for this battle as well. That's because Skunk Tank, Atticus's first Pokemon, has no moves that can damage me besides Sucker Punch. And if I don't use an attacking move for 5 turns, it'll run out of PP. 
So I boost my attack for 5 turns, wasting all of its PP, and have an insanely boosted Lucario to deal with all of Atticus's Pokemon. We knock out Skunk Tank and then his non-shiny Revivroom before in comes Muck and finally when the big car makes its dramatic entrance we are forced to swap out as Lucario has taken a few hits and it's gotten quite low. But that's alright because Arcanine can come in and make short work of it. Up next is the normal gym and should I even bother showing this? I mean, Kamehameha! Kami me mommy me ma! Kame ha! The next battle for my golden team to tackle was the Ghost Gem, and this is a double battle. And for those of you who haven't played this game, one of the very few double battles in the game. So we gotta enjoy it while it lasts. And so I came up with a pretty cool strategy involving our recently evolved Altaria, who retained its normal terror type, meaning we could terrestrialize normal to avoid some damage from ghost attacks. We hit both Mimikyu and Bennett with a disarming voice, breaking Mimikyu's disguise, and raise Revivroom's attack and speed with shift gear. Terrestrializing makes the audience cheer for you, raising all your stats, so now my team was set up to roll, and so it did. The two opposing Pokemon do pitiful damage to my boys, and Revivroom knocks out Mimikyu, as Altaria almost finishes off Bennett, but it just survives. In comes her Houndoom next turn, and we take down Bennett, although Houndstone survives and hides in a Shadow Force. We knock out the Ghost Toxtricity, and because the Ghost Dog is so slow, it survives yet another turn before getting taken out by an Iron Head from Revivroom. Upon leaving the gym, I stumble upon the next team member. Go! Shiny Sneasel! Yes! Johnny Sneasel, let's go! I mean, it's very pink, but it's also gold! I name it Beerus, and we head down to take on the second last Titan of the game. I went and found Flamethrower to teach to Altaria, as it resists or is immune to almost all of the ground Titan's attack, meaning we can take it out the first time with two Flamethrowers. The second fight takes a little bit longer, as our Golden Cloud and Arvin Scovillain slowly chip away at the giant robot. Shame he's covered in silver and not gold, because I'd love to add a golden one of these to my team. But... Heading into the Herba Cave, we finally find what we were looking for. The Golden Plant is mine! Ha <laughs> ha! What do you mean you're taking it and turning it into a sandwich? Not on my watch! And with that, I decided it was finally time to evolve Relaw. This little bug had been pushing that golden ball around for far too long. And because it was weak, I never had a real reason to use it. But these are one of those shitty walking evolutions, and this dude walks so slow, but I have a big brain, and I just thought if I put two rubber bands around the control stick, we'll just run in a circle, and this thing will walk itself. And when you look at that marvelous boy, oh, and this one as well. Yo, look at that golden beetle! These two were going to be perfect for the next gym, which was the Psychic Gym. And this beauty leads with Farigaroth, as I lead with Weavile. We knock it out with a beat up and in comes Gardevoir. Obviously, being a fairy type, I don't want to keep my dark type in, so I swap it to Rabskar, expecting it to be able to one-shot Gardevoir with a Terra Bug Buzz, but unfortunately we get outsped, drop to red, and don't even finish off Gardevoir. So I swap over to Revivroom, who should be immune to the Dazzling Gleam, but it somehow predicted my swap, which makes no sense and almost kills Revivroom. Luckily, we outspeed it the following turn and knock it out. Next in is Erispathra, and expecting a Psychic move, I swap back to Weavile as it attempts to use Psychic against my Dark type. We knock it out with a beat up and in comes her final Pokemon Florges. Who you guessed it, we outspeed and knock out with beat up. Nice, only one more golden gym badge remains. And to acquire it would take almost no effort as Arcanine went for the kill on all this dude's ice types. Frostmoth deleted, Beartick destroyed, so Titan survived but then didn't do enough to take me out anyway and so down it goes, leaving just Altaria who you guessed it goes down in one flamethrower, earning me my final golden gym badge. Let's go! The fairy star base with Ortega and his golden staff is my next target, and Revivroom should come in pretty handy for this fight. We take out his leader Zoomeral with a poison jab before failing to knock out Dash Bomb with an iron head. Fortunately, it does flinch it, meaning we take it out next turn with no damage, and I shift gear against Wigglytuff. But it undoes my hard work, reducing my attack with Charm. I hit it with a gyro ball expecting to deal big damage, but we do this and then fall in love, meaning it's time to swap out to Lucario. I swap back to Revivroom the following turn and knock it out with a Poison Jab. She just Poison Jab from the start. <laughs> this leaves just the Starmobile and a big Terra Poison Jab gets its health to just above half. The next turn it hits me with a Confuse Ray, but we hit through it, bringing the Starmobile down to a fraction of health. But 
The next turn, however, we hit ourselves in confusion and our health is brought very low. So I swap to Lucario who takes no damage on entrance from spin out and then knocks out Ortega's final Pokemon the next turn. I like your golden staff, but your team ain't golden like mine. Ah, the final Titan, but we already got the Golden Herb and Mystica. Why am I here? Ah, uh, I'm already here. I might as well do it. Well, Lucario makes short work of Dondozo in the fight, but to be prepared for Tatsukuri, I sent out Weavil first in the next fight. I swap out to Altaria to keep Weavil at full health, and Altaria slowly chips it down until we get weak ourselves. We swap over to Lucario and hit it with a... Hummy hummy ha! Oh, it does one shot. Wow. Okay. Wait, it... What? Jarvis Enhance. What the hell? Pretty sure he has no health. What? <laughs> Alright. We do take it down the following turn and in come Tatsuguri, who does do decent damage to us, but with Ice Spinner, we eventually take it down. From here, we head to the final star base, and upon arrival, I realize my team is definitely not equipped to handle this fight. I mean, her team is cracked. Look at it. I mean, maybe besides this guy, but half my team is weak to the fighting type. So I pondered on my strategy and noticed on the map that both Pokemon I previously failed to capture had mass outbreaks available. Oh! Johnny! I'm um, the No! What? Oh! Wait! Wait! Okay. Um, please don't despawn on me, Miss Magius. Okay. We got the surprise attack. I was like... It keeps disappearing. Although I still have a team of six, having a backup definitely won't hurt. We name it Frieza and off we go to fight Aerie. She leads with Toxicroak and I lead with Altaria. I attempted to put it to sleep with a Sing on first turn, but we unfortunately miss and it hits me with a Poison Jab, poisoning me. We do land the sleep the following turn, however, switching out to Arcanine to raise our attack. We knock out Toxicroak before it could wake up with Flamethrower, and with our attack boosted, a single play rough can knock out Persimmon. In next was her Annihilate, and I didn't expect it to outspeed us, but it does, and it hits us with a close combat. Oh, buddy, that's not good. But its defense did drop, so we might be able to potentially one-shot with the player off. But we miss! Are you kidding me? I was ready to sacrifice Arcanine here, but in a twist of fate... Yeah, I, I think I... <gasps> I was gonna sacrifice Android 18, but he... She duffed it out! Let's go! Arcanine, our starter, hangs on because she loves us so much, obliterating Annihilate with a play rough. Lucario is her next Pokemon, and although Arcanine was barely hanging on, I knew Flamethrower would take it out, and suspected that we would outspeed it. And we do, leaving the Calf Starmobile all alone. I finally swap out Arcanine now, and slowly chip away its health with Dragon Pulses. We do get paralyzed and then drop to red, so I swap over to Rabska, and... How are we still slower than it? It's triple speed down! Wait, that's harsh drops, so it's six speed stages down, and it's still out speeding. Okay, well that was a lot of fucking damage, so I'll take it. Surely, right? Yes! Let's go! You know, I was fully ready to lose a Pokemon on this fight. I was fully ready to, but we didn't. That's awesome! Let's go! Wow, okay, we didn't even need to use Miss Magius. Awesome! Alright, it's now time to take on the Elite Four. And the only thing Elite about these four is their battle theme. Because man, these fights were pretty damn easy. Against Rika, I lead with Miss Magius, who knows Magical Leaf to deal with Wishcast. As Dugtria comes in, I make the swap to Weavile and Terastalize. Dugtria does use this turn to set up a Sandstorm, but the following turn, I outspeed it, knocking it out with an Ice Spinner. Out comes Camerupt, and to deal with that, I'll need to swap for sure. So over to Altaria I went to put it to sleep. We do miss however, and I put to sleeves ourselves with Yawn. Thankfully, Camerupt's only move that it can hit me with is Fire Blast, which we obviously resist being Dragon, and when we wake up, put it to sleep ourselves. Switching back to Weavile now, we knock it out, and in comes Donphan. An Ice Spinner definitely would've one-shot it, but unfortunately it had Sturdy. Luckily, Weavile is a beast and is able to tank the Stone Edge, living on just 22 HP, allowing it to knock it out the following turn with another Ice Spinner. And finally, down goes Clodsire to one more Ice Spinner. Yeah, Terrestrializing ain't gonna save you this time. This pitiful child stands no chance against the power of my Golden Papa. Go get him, Arcanine! 
We've always made choice to deal with Larry and his flying type Pokemon. We knock out Tropius with one Ice Spinner, same with Staraptor, and same with Altaria, even though it did manage to sneak a flamethrower in, lowering Weavile's health to half. Oricorio was an easy sweep, leaving his Terra Flamigo all by itself, and with one more Ice Spinner, we say goodbye to Larry. What's up, baby? Take me out the day. Would you believe it if I told you Weavile then rolled all this Dragon Specialist Pokemon as well? Here we are, now face to face with the champion. Do I get some type of golden reward for becoming champion? Nope. What do you mean no? Why did I even bother doing this? Ah, well, I'm here now. So I lead with Weavile who knocks out Espathro with a single Night Slash. She sends an Avalog and swapping over to Arcanine we knock it out with a Flamethrower. King Gambit is just as easy, knocked out with one more Flamethrower, leading to the arrival of the loser. I swap back to Weavile to knock it out with a Night Slash, but it just doesn't knock it out. Oh no! No! Weavile, you absolutely crushed this Elite Four. That's so disappointing to lose you here. Well, sometimes these things happen. At least we have Lucario to come in and sweep up its remaining health. We knock out Gogo with a Terra Boosted Aura Sphere, leaving just her Glamora. And to my surprise, Glamora actually outspeeds Lucario and drops Lucario to just 1 HP. But it didn't hang on because of love, it just survived on 1 HP. This lets Lucario knock it out with an Aura Sphere, earning us our champion title. We got a number one victory royale, yeah, Fortnite we belt to get. That would have been bad if we lost both Weevil and Lucario there. But earning this champion title kind of means nothing. What did you just say? Deep in Area Zero is a super secret golden treasure? But to get there, I'll need some help. And so, I go recruit Daddy Issues himself by beating him in a battle. This fight was pretty straightforward, but I need more help to get into Area Zero. Maybe that girl from the Star Bases will help. We have to beat her in a battle in order for her to join us on our quest, but Ark and I make short work of her evolution team. But I need one more member. I guess I could bring that goldless Nimona along. This battle was actually quite close. Leading with Lycanroc, I send out our main man Lucario. But predicting a Drill Rush, I Terrastalize and then knock it out with an Aura Sphere. Pormor in next actually shocks me by going for a Double Shock, which would have actually one shot me, but luckily Lucario hangs on and we can knock it out. Wow, that's the second time Lucario's almost died and survived like that. I need to be more careful. Now, although we are sitting on just 1 HP, we should still outspeed Dunsparce and Orthworm, allowing me to one-shot them both. But as Gudra comes in, I need to make the swap. Sending in Bomb on the Rev Room, we tank its Dragon Pulse, and then the next turn flinch Gudra with an Iron Head, meaning we knock it out the following turn without taking any more damage. This leaves just Meow Skirata, and a Poison Jab takes it out. Well, with that done, we've assembled our team to dive down into Area Zero. There was a few weird looking creatures to battle along the way, but when we eventually do make it down to the base to claim our golden prize... Wait a minute! I've been lied to! There was supposed to be piles of gold in here, not piles of diamonds! Oh my god... That's it, Toro. You're going down for tricking me! I came down here because you told me that there was piles of gold, but now there's only piles of diamonds. Alright, so the strategy here is basically use Lucario for the majority of the fights. Um, I want to boost its speed so it actually can outspeed everything that comes in. Um, I think Lucario can tank whatever uh, it uses, whatever fire type it move it uses, as long as I'm terrestrialized, because then I lose the steel type, so it's not a super effective attack, which, yeah, it outspeeds. But we live. As long as we don't get burnt, that's fine. And then if we agility and get a, a harsh speed raise, right? Sharp, a sharp speed raise. We should outspeed it next turn, and then we go for Earthquake. That should one-shot, because it's Fire Poison. Nice. So for Iron Bundle, we can just hit it with a Aura Sphere. We should outspeed, because we're double speed raise. Okay, cool. This should one shot. Nice. We should be able to hit it with a another aura sphere and knock it. Oh, that's not super effective. Oh, damn. All right, because it's flying, not dragon. Shit. I don't know if this is gonna knock it. 
No! That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Okay, um... Okay, I'm gonna do Altaria. Okay, that kind of messes with the strategy a little bit, losing Lucario so early. I was planning to use him for a little bit longer. Okay, cool. Okay, down it goes. Now, probably Iron Thorns comes in, because then it can Stone Edge me. Deal as much chip damage as I can. Oh, oh, he could miss Stone Edge. Yes, nice! Okay, he missed one Stone Edge. If he missed misses another one, um, that would be ideal. Yo, let's go Nimbus! Yo, Nimbus with the Cloud. You can't hit Clouds, bro. Finally hits its Stone Edge. And yeah, it takes me out. But we did do a lot of damage. And it's slow, so it sort of kind of works out. Not perfectly, but not horribly either. Magius. If I miss Magius, Sunny Day, this turn, and then send an Arcanine, I think uh, we should be able to take out Iron Hands and Iron Thorn out speeding. So, gonna do the Sunny Day now. This? Oh, the Intimidate will drop its attack. Oh, I kind of wish I could have kept that for Iron Valiant, because it does get a attack boost. Yeah. Okay, this leaves Iron Valiant somewhat confident, but Iron Valiant is a very strong Pokemon, so it could all go tits up very quickly. Flamethrower. Oh, it outspeeds. Okay, Brick Break does. Oh, it's two-shotting. Okay. Flamethrower does how much? Oh, what? It one-shot! Yo, let's go, Arcanine! And so that's how I beat Pokemon Violet using only gold shiny Pokemon. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash like, hit subscribe, check out Sakura Co, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!